Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and you're watching another What I'm Reading Right Now video here on the channel. This is the series where I talk about what I have been reading, what I'm currently reading, and what I'm going to be reading next. I have had a very busy week since the last time we spoke. I spent the weekend in Brussels with my mum. Fantastic city. God love you, Brussels. Ate waffles, went to the art gallery, had a wonderful time. Fell deeply in love with this little demon guy from this Hieronymus Bosch painting. I love him. He is my son. Did I manage to read? Heck yes, I did. I got so much reading done. It turns out one of the best ways to get me to read is to trap me on a train going under the ocean where I'm worried about running out of phone battery. Perfect situation for me, read quite a lot. I updated it all on Storygraph after the fact, so it's all out of order, which is very concerning to me, but I'm gonna try and remember what order I read things in. I started off with Best Served Cold by Joe Abercrombie. This is the first of his standalone books in the first Law series, which sounds confusing because they are standalones, but I do think you need to read them in order. There was an order suggested to me, so I'm reading them in that order. This follows a character whose name I've already forgotten. Monza Mercato, who is on a quest for vengeance, as you would think from the title. So the book is split out into chunks where she is getting vengeance on a series of individuals, and we follow that through. Joe Abercrombie is a grimdark author, if you've not encountered him before, so these are fairly brutal books, fairly intense books, um, but I actually really enjoyed this. I thought it was a very satisfying read. I've not read a lot of very chunky fantasy in a while, so I think it was a little bit of a refresher for me. There was something really satisfying about reading it all in one train journey. I just had a good time. Uh, unsurprisingly, the theme of vengeance and whether it's good for you in a Joe Abercrombie book uh, gets pretty, pretty intense as it goes out, but overall would recommend. Um, I'm trying to work out if I'm missing a bunch of stuff because I don't have a very good working memory of the first Law series, but I'm just going to read these, figure out how I feel about it, maybe go back and do a reread later. I just want to get through them because they've been on my TBR for way too long. After that, I'm pretty sure I finished V.E. Schwab's The Fragile Threads of Power, which I do have a review video coming for. It'll be out in two weeks, I think. I'm going to try and get it out on or around publication day, so you can check that out if you like, or you can get it early if you're a patron. Um, I very much enjoyed this, not to spoil my own video. I thought it was great. If you liked the original books, you will also like this. It is a similar adventure story following on from the events of the Shades of Magic trilogy. Really interested to see where the series goes as a whole, but overall I had a good time reading this. It took longer than I wanted it to, but I think had I not had it digitally, if I'd had it physically, I would have just read it all in one go and it would have been fine. Now picture me on the way back on the Sunday. I finished The Phoenix King by Aparna Verna. This is a re-release of a book that was originally called, it's in the acknowledgements, The Boy With Fire and Orbit have purchased it and re-released it. This was fine um, and I knew it was fine going in and I had a fairly good idea that it would probably be fine and sure enough it was fine. I liked a lot of elements of this. This is an Indian inspired fantasy world where we are in kind of a technological age. There's submarines, there's heads up displays, it's all that kind of thing. We have a princess who needs to be able to wield firepower but can't. We have her guard who is previously an assassin who is wanted by the other side in this sort of conflict who maybe he's going to betray her, maybe he won't. We don't know until you've read the book. I liked a lot of elements to this. It wasn't my favourite. It felt very samey to a lot of other things that I've read but I don't regret reading it. It's just not a book that I think is gonna stay around on my shelves very long. I am probably gonna read the sequel. This is called the Ravens Trilogy, according to the side. I will read the sequel because that's how I am, I guess. I read two books in a series and then give up. I don't think it will stick around forever. I then finished the audiobook of Half a War, the third book in the Shattered Sea series by Joe Abercrombie. I really loved this series. I thought it was fantastic. Um, Joe Abercrombie can write a very uh, engaging read. It turns out, turns out, reason this guy sold so many books. Um, I really liked this. This is the Viking inspired series, so in a different world to the first lore. This, like the other books in the series, introduces new protagonists who are connected to the story from before, uh, but we follow new characters. And one of the things Joe Abercrombie does so well is make you fall in love with a character in the book where they are the protagonist and then make them not necessarily the villain, but like they definitely don't become the good guy from somebody else's perspective. It's so interesting. It's such great writing. 
I love these. I thought they were fantastic. I'll reread them in the future. I now need to buy the first one because that's the one that I don't own physically so I can read them again. A great time. There will be a video coming out. And most recently I finished Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. I've talked about this a bunch on the channel. This is the first book in the Regency Fairy Tales series. There are two other books and a short story and another short story. The short story, The Lord Sorcier, is in the back of this if you own the Orbit physical editions. Um, so yes, those are both ticked off my list again. I love these books. They are so good. In amidst all of this grim dark, sometimes you just need a fantasy romance and this was just lovely. I'm really looking forward to reading the other two because this one I think I've now read like four times. I'm ready to refresh my memory of 10,000 Stitches and Long Shadow. A good time, always recommend. I am currently in the middle of two books. I am reading A Fireborn of Exile by Aliette de Baudard, which is another book in her Shuya universe where we have uh, AI that are kind of also people and people and a whole bunch of stuff going on. The other book I've read in this series, I think I've read two actually, but I can't remember what one of them was called off the top of my head. But the one that I've talked about the most is The Red Scholar's Wake, which I absolutely loved. I was having a harder time getting into this book. I'm about halfway through, I think. Uh, and the first quarter was very difficult because I definitely had the sense that I was missing a connection somewhere, but I've kind of got past the point where that connection was important. Uh, and I might have to just go back and double check where characters' names are so familiar. Have I read a book featuring that character before? Am I reading their prequel or their backstory? But the writing itself is very good. It's sapphic again, which I love. Uh, I think it's gonna have fixing something that is broken, which is one of my favorite tropes. So I'm very excited to finish that off. That's probably gonna be my priority for the next couple of days. Because alongside that, I am reading The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie, which is the next one of these standalone books. I, my copy is downstairs. So sorry, Editing Judith will have to put the cover in. I'm enjoying it. I'm about a hundred and something pages through. Uh, I'm reading it in the chunks that the book is set out in. And yeah, not much to report at this stage. It seems like there's going to be a battle and it might be a book about a three day long battle. Um, we'll see. We'll see how I feel about it. I'm, I'm liking it less than Best Served Cold at the moment, but I think that might just be because I'm not in it yet and I need to just take some time and sit and read the whole thing. Maybe I need to get back on a train going underwater, maybe. Maybe that's the only way. Moving forward to things I'm going to be reading next, we're kind of moving into next week because I've been fairly on top of my reading. If I get all of that done and everything else that I also need to get done over the weekend, I will be reading my two library books. I have a copy of Misrule by Heather Walter, which angle can I hold this up that it's not going to be horrible? Vaguely there. This is the sequel to Malice. I liked Malice well enough. I saw this in the library, thought it would be a good plan. And then I have Shanghai Immortal, which has been around a bunch. It's just a new release that I wanted to read. For next week, I have 10,000 Stitches, which is the next Regency Fairy Tales book. I have Red Country, which is the next standalone. It's much shorter, very excited about that fact. And I have The Hassad Air, which I will be reading this review copy to be read as well. I'm very much failing on the seasonal reading front. Like it's so warm right now, or I should be moving into like autumnal reading and I'm fully going like, no, bleak, wintry fan fantasy, please. <laughs> in terms of books added to my TBR, I have one. I have Mammoth at the Gates, which is the next book in the Singing Hills cycle by Nevo. You know I love these books. I've loved them for a really long time. I'm going to try and do a reread slash re-listen to all of them over this weekend while I'm doing a bunch of crafty stuff so that I can read that one fresh because I think that was part of the reason I didn't love Into the Riverlands as much as I wanted to is because I didn't have the context of the other books around it. So I'm gonna try and do that reread. That's my goal. Good, I was waiting to find an audiobook I wanted this weekend. That will be, that will be the plan. Mammoth at the Gates is one of the new releases I wanted to talk to you about. So tick that one off the list, that's done. And the other one is called Daughter of Winter and Twilight. And it is the sequel to Queen of Coin and Whispers by Helen Corcoran, which I read and definitely enjoyed. I know there's like a huge fandom behind that series. I read it and I enjoyed it. And I kind of went, oh, I should do a reread of that at some point. But because I don't own a copy, I have not done. I gave the copy back to the friend I borrowed it from and then went, oh no. Um, so, I will eventually read that and read the sequel. I'm gonna try and get them from the library. I think that was everything we had to cover in this week's episode. Hopefully you're doing well and not overcooking too much in wherever you are. Uh, it is far too warm, so I will be descending from the pool of molten lava that is my office very shortly after turning the camera off. So we, we need to close out now. What have you been reading? What have you been up to? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're commenting, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. 
You can also come hang out on Discord where we have chill chats about books if you're that way inclined. I would like to say an enormous thank you to all the ghosts who haunt me over on Patreon. They support the channel and in return get early access to videos, bonus content, live streams and more. If you'd like to join their number that's linked below as well. Thank you so much to you for watching, that's all from me and I will see you in the next one. Stand a piece of bloopers now. Fell deeply in love with this little demon guy from a Hieronymus Bosch I then finished the audiobook of Half a War, which I do have, I can hold it up. I don't need to edit in the cover.